goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Good afternoon. Only 30 minutes late. Uh, yeah, a few little challenges. Sometimes you know there's a culprit and you just have to work out who the culprit is. Was the culprit me for stepping on a cord and unplugging something? Was the culprit Facebook like the other week? Was the culprit NBN? Or was the culprit my laptop who somewhere in the hemisphere decided to do a major software update to my laptop without my knowing? Somewhere between 11 and 2. So I do apologize we're 30 minutes late, but hopefully you kind of, once you got the little uh, post I got cast to put up, hopefully you went, okay, I've got seven minutes. And you've run around, you put the dishwasher on, you grab the washing in, you made yourself a cuppa, and we're all good to go, hopefully. Um, so good afternoon to everyone. And I will first, because you've all waited for me, and I really appreciate it, so I am going to say good afternoon, Helen. Good afternoon, Yvonne, again. <laughs> um, good afternoon, Marie. Oh, Jan's here as well, and Wendy, Jenny, Jenny Miller. If is Flynn joining us tomorrow morning? Because I have, I have a quilt for Flynn, just for him in the morning from Eileen. So please let me know if he's going to be here, because I'm I've saved it till Thursday because I want him to see it. Um, hello, Marie. Good to see you. Pam's here as well. Hey, Louise. How are you? Sally's here. Oh, thank you so much for waiting for. Thank you for waiting. Hello, Rosemary. Yes, we're here. We're here. Um, yeah, it's all it's all good. It's all going to be wonderful. And uh, yeah, we've got some things. We've got some cool things to show you. So you saw a sneak peek of a gorgeous orchid quilt a minute ago, and that's because I was so excited we were going live. I didn't want to start with that one, so you've had a little bit of a sneaky and seen it. Oh, good afternoon, Lisa. Very excited. Have ordered two of Eileen's books. And you will not regret it. They are brilliant. They really run uh, like a workshop. So you, you feel like you're inside her head and you, you feel like you're going through the workings and how she worked things out and exactly what she's doing. So I think, I think yeah, you're going to feel like you're in, the, you're in the classroom with her. They're lovely, lovely, lovely books. So good for you. Really glad you've done that. Um, good afternoon again, Joan. Do you think it's going to feel like Groundhog Day by the end of the week? Maybe just a little bit. I um, yeah, it it may just a little bit. But I tell you what, so much. Hello, Sharon. Hello, Jenny. Um, so much has happened. Ah, oh, Diane. Great. Flynn's in in the morning. It's not about us. It's about Flynn, everyone. That's good. Donna's here from the UK. Hello, hello, hello. Good to see you. Oh, I'm being silly now. Okay. So, so much has happened. Oh, you're all telling me where you are and I'm getting jealous. So much has happened since this morning's show. I've been up and down the stairs 20 times. So I've done my gym workout for the day. Uh, I wonder why I sit down at night and my feet hurt. It's the warehouse and the stairs at the moment. That's definitely what it is. So you're not late, I'm late. It's fine, don't worry about it. Um, but yeah, so much has happened. So. I was right, while we were on the last show, Judy's bag has arrived. I think that's the last one coming into the building for the challenge. I was going to show it to you this afternoon because like out of the box and then I opened the box and went, no, 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 no. Judy's work belongs with Rachel Daisy. So you're going to see Jude's bag on Saturday, Saturday morning, um, because it just, uh, you know me, a bit OCD, like mixing, putting together things that complement each other. So, you'll see Judy's on Saturday morning. I've got another one of Marie Evans over here to show you. I've got Ann Jackson's over that side of the room. So, we will get started and we'll start going through some of the gorgeous things that are uh, here to show you. Um, and we're going to start with this beautiful thing here behind me. And this is Eileen Campbell's gorgeous owl quilt. I'm just looking for... Just a minute, I've got another one here, just a tick. I do, I do, I do. There's another one, I'm just gonna sneak this past you, just sneak this past you, pop it over here. I have another beautiful bag here that I need to show you at the same time, I've just realized with Maurice. Okay, this, of course, is a parliament of owls. So this gorgeous quilt by Eileen, 
who you're now, if you start to feel like you're getting to know her a little bit now, you should, because you can sort of get a feel for the style and how she works and her amazing use of colour and prints. Um, Power Woman of Owls is, was made in 2016. Um, I feel like I may have been around for this one, but I don't recognise any of the fabrics in, oh, yes I do. There's a little bit of fairy frost in there. But this is beautiful. Now, there's a very brief description for this one, and I'm going to give you a close-up, and we can have a look at the techniques again that Eileen uh, has used. But she just writes, a couple of my family members have a real love of owls. Uh, here are 22, in a traditional setting, waiting to keep someone warm. Oh, that's so beautiful. This was exhibited at Showcase in 2017. Uh, went to Waverley, yeah, yeah, it was, wasn't it? It was the Waverley Patchworkers Show 2018. Yes, I think that's where I saw it. I think it was. Oh, and also at the uh, Australian Quilters Association exhibition. So how do you take elegance, amazing techniques, and a really, really cute, cute, cute little topic? Um, these are... I need my glasses. I think they're little sequins on there. Uh, I don't think my glasses are up here. It's a bit sad. Oh, yes, they are. Let me, let me check before I give you the close-up. They are beautiful little. Um, Eileen, if you want to text me and let me know what they are, I will let the girls know. They look like they're little crystals. They're like little crystal beads. They're beautiful. So... I mean, it's a very traditionally paced quilt, isn't it? It's just the wow factor about all these cute little guys sitting on their branches on the quilt. There are also, I think you can just see, there are also little ones in the corners up the top. Beautiful sprays of flowers down the side. All right, let me, let me zoom in the camera for you and you can have a little bit of a closer look. Do -do. If I do, if I go to there, there you go, then you've got those six. Just lovely. Uh, one, from where you are, I don't know if you can see it on your screens, depending on how you're watching the show, but can you see in, see how it looks like there is an inner paste border of the same fabric behind the owl. So you've got this one here that's sashed, and then you've got another one, and then you've got what the owls are sitting on. It's not, it's, it's, it's deceiving to the eye because if I take you in really close, can you see what she's actually done? It's not an extra piece, it's all the same background, but she has not quilted about three quarters of an inch, I'm guessing, out on the edge of the square. This is the most minuscule, teeny weeny stippling. So it flattens down the actual block that the applique is on, and then this part of the square is puffed up. Really, really clever. While I've got you up that close, can you see the detail in these little flowers? Uh, and I'll take it back a little bit for you so that you can have a look at the fluffy birds. Just a little bit. I'm getting the hang of the zoom, girls, sorry. There you go. So now you've got a closer look and you can actually see their little eyes, and they've got their little wings, and again, classic Eileen Campbell, tiniest of tiniest satin stitch to applique them down. Um, same with the leaves, and she's got some little stem detail through in here that would have all been done free motion. I do like these centers. And when you get up close to this, this is actually not a cotton, this is a silk in here. So it just, it illuminates, absolutely illuminates. The same with the pink ones, these ones here. They look like they're a silky fabric. Really, really pretty. So to take, you know, quite conservative colors, if you want to, you know, let's honestly say, beautiful woodland conservative colors, and then do something amazing with it. There you go. Sorry, Eileen's, <laughs> Eileen's quilt's not big enough to hide my emergency sign behind it. I do apologise, and I will have to cut that out when I put the photo up on Facebook. There we go. 
So yeah, absolutely beautiful. Now I'm going to switch you over to the other one. As I was saying, so much happened uh, in between. So we had a big shipment of fabric arrive from Japan um, that I will be showing you on our show next week. I'm going to save it till next week. You're not getting it this week. But if I said to you, I'm going to turn this light around for you so you can see Marilyn's quilt. There we go. If I said to you, it's got butterflies, it's got jade, it's got flowers, it's got ombre, it's Japanese and it's got gold. Hold that thought, we'll be there next week. So it's just beautiful, beautiful fabrics and black and metallic gold, oriental prints are just stunning. So that all arrived up, uh, sorry, stock up on stocks of bottom line because you've been chewing through bottom line thread on the website. Um, and a fina as well, so the beautiful hand piecing thread. Uh, a few of you are waiting on me to do bonus pack collections of those. So now that stock's in, we'll be added to that. Steve at the moment is um, at home at his place updating all of the stock levels on those threads and um, the new fabrics that have come in. So, but I will be showing them to you next week as well. All right, let's look at this gorgeous thing. Look at it. Now, Marilyn, if you are watching, I opened up the bag and pulled out your quilt. And I have to apologise, there, there was not a copy of your um, entry form in the bag. And you may have emailed it to me at somewhere in the past, but I do not have my hands on it at the moment. So I do sincerely apologise. Uh, I don't think there's anything different. The but what I will do straight after the show is um, I will check in with you if I need to. Because I know the quilt. I, this is this is this is the biggest form of flattery um, for me, because it's my quilt design. It's called Aussie Orchids uh, amongst the Wattle and Gums. Wattle and Gum quilt designed by uh, Orchid. I don't want any credit for this though, because what she's done with this quilt is insane. Orchid appliques by Marilyn Larkin. Paste and appliqued by Marilyn Larkin and quilted by the one and only Lee Bass as well. So, this quilt originally was called, ah, uh, Marilyn, channel email, Cascading Gum Leaves. So I brought this quilt design out when we redid, oh sorry, when we launched all of this tonal wattle print, which I'm still in half minds about bringing back. I may actually bring it back um, because it was it was it was it was fun at its time, and I probably didn't use it enough. I think I was a bit busy with all the Oriental and um, European stuff I was doing. So anyway, this was the quilt, and the quilt had all of the blocks with these appliqued gum leaves in them. What has Marilyn done? Ah, she's taken half of them out, and she has added these magnificent interpretations of Australian orchids. Now she's got a lot to do with orchids. So she knows her orchids and she knew what she was doing. And they are just beautiful. And the, sad, the most frustrating thing for me is I have got the camera as far back in the room as I can with the cords and everything with my setup. And I'm still not back far enough for you to see the entire quilt. So I've got, and I've got the lights shining on it so you can see it. I've got another camera set up to show you the lower part of the quilt you can't see on the screen. So, but if you know you're Australian, oh, this, this is just amazing. We're going to have to get the camera on this. She's done a beautiful job. It, she's either used a really, really lovely, quite bold hand dyed batik or a tonal like that, um, or she's come through and actually done some painting over fabric as well to get the, to get the effect of the orchids. So there's two ways we're going to do this so that you can get a better look at it. I'm going to pop you on a camera that shows you the lower half of the quilt. I may even still need to pick some of them up for you. So let me show you down the bottom. There you go. Have a look at that. See what I mean? Aren't they just beautiful? They're just stunning. I'll hold a few of them up for you so you can see. Here. There you go. Look at these babies. I can't complain about the size of the quilt, can I? Because it was a big quilt and we got a bit carried away and it kept going. I do, I do like this purple one. Look at that down there. They're just gorgeous. Uh, they make me smile as well. They do make me smile because they're, 
They're like, some of them are like little faces. Oh, this one is called a duck, isn't it? That is a duck orchid. I think it is. All right, now, while you're looking there, I'm going to try and get you a better shot with the other camera. There we go. All right. So if I take you back to this one, that gives you, there you go. Now you've got a really good look at some of these. I think, I don't know, it's like picking your favorite. I don't know how to do it, but Beautiful. I'm in your way, aren't I? There you go. That one. Love that. Beautiful. That's the duck one. The ducky. Just lovely. Just lovely. Yeah? Just lovely. Alright. Pop you back. Have a look at the ones down the bottom again. There you go. Pretty, pretty. Pretty, pretty. And I'll fix up this other camera. And uh, then we're going to stand in front of Marilyn's and have a look at some bags while we're over there. I can't do it justice. I just, I can't do it justice. Um, I, I can see it and it's glowing and everything, but it's really, really hard to um, just show you how much detail's in it. And uh, the quilting is sensational as well that Lee's done this beautiful free motion quilting around these. You can't, I can't do it for you on the camera, I don't think, but just beautiful and makes everything pop. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Do love it. All right. Um, I, think, I think why I would like to go back uh, and do that tonal range is we seem to be seem to be doing a lot of that kind of tonal stuff at the moment. And I'd like to have these back in our repertoire. We'll think about it. We'll see how we go. Alright, so I've got two lots of bags to show you. A couple of really nice ones that have been made with Melba in the Australis colourway. And then I've also got these here, which are all of Ann Jackson's bags. I gave you a little sneak peek on the show the other day. So I want to I want to do these justice because Anne sent over four and um, Anne is who, someone that I would call, I've known her quite a while and if you love our Walker bags then you know her work because that was her design. So she works with a lot of hand dyes, with a lot of batik, she does a lot of painting and this, this is pretty special. So I'm going to turn this light round so that you can see them a bit better. There we go. So this is her kookaburra bag. Now there will be in here a description. There we go. So I'll hold that up there for you. So this one, hand painted losing, using luminaire paints, hand dyed gum leaves and lining. Free motion quilting. So hand dyed gum leaves. So that means... She's hand dyed all of the fabrics that she's used for these gum leaves herself. Who doesn't want a kookaburra bag? I want a kookaburra bag. And the back she's used a beautiful batik as well. So lovely, lovely, lovely bag. So that is number one. And um, interestingly, she's popped the blue on the inside. Who would think to do that? Put the brown with the blue and it works, but it does. And it just, you know, what it does it highlights that little tinge of blue in the kookaburra's wings that she's used out here and then popped it into the lining in the bag. I'm going to pop her form back in here because it's very, very important when we get to judging on the weekend that everyone is um, regimented and organised and oh no, that's my favourite, we're doing that one last. I'm allowed to have favourites from one person, I'm allowed to have favourites across the whole thing. Okay. Now, I've just, there's a little bit of fluff on this bag, I hope Anna will forgive me, but it's just off the edges of the, um, the bags that she especially made to pop her bags in. I'm just going to get in there and give these hungry echidnas a bit of a fluff out. There you go. So there they are. There's one. So this one is called... Hungry Echidnas, and it is a lunch bag with drawstring closure inside, which is very clever. 
um, applicator kidneys, hand embroidered ants, okay, and hand hand painted batik grassland. So, oh, oh, she's done this herself. This grass along here, hand painted batik. So she's actually done that herself, which is very very clever. And then we have hand embroidered, can you see them? Ants. And also a really lovely use of batik across, so the pattern goes, um, I'm a bit of a vertical girl, so, and you would know that from my bags, a lot of the time when I design I go that way, but she's pieced hers this way to give the sky above and then the grass underneath. Uh, and then inside, look at the lining. So we've got a drawstring, drawstring inside. So that keeps everything nice and secure inside. So I will pop the, pop the label back. Uh, Felicity, your box got picked up. Everyone's stuff got picked up in between. There's lots of things going on. Oh, um, rubber foam batting arrived as well. Bucket loads of it. Finally. So again, when we finish Facebook, I'll let Steve know. He was working on, oh, well, I'll tell you the threads and a couple of other things. And we have a multitude of soft and stable back in the building, finally. So we will get that up by the half, uh, by half meter increments for you to um, purchase this afternoon. Speaking of bags, this is Red Eye Tree Frogs screen prints, hand dyed fabrics, free motion and machine quilting. Yes it is, look at them. Aren't they a bit of fun? They are luminous, aren't they, under the lights? And then, if you don't, there's another one on that side. I will confess, I do, I may own, and bags, just maybe. So, from each show, we've had at the gardens. Um, and in another life, when we can have workshops somewhere, we will get Anne in, whether she likes it or not, because um, I love watching her. She makes me calm when she does all this stuff. She's a very calm quilter, unlike me. All right, this is my fave. This is Pin Cushion Hakia, my favorite of Anne's. Pin Cushion Hakia. Um, Echo dyed, sorry, eco dyed fabrics decorated with lino cuts, screen prints, and applique with free motion machine quilting. This does my head in a little bit. She has at some point made a beautiful piece of fabric with these on, and then she's chopped the rest up. So that's the main feature on the front. Yeah, lovely. But look, she's chopped the rest up to give you that real abstract look. I mean, yeah, a piece of printed fabric, sure, but she's done it to her own. I think that's really clever. Can you see the lino print? That's actually stamped out, folks. It's not stitched. Very clever, very clever. Lovely, lovely, lovely bag. All right, so that's those ones. So there's. Anne's got four in for the competition. Now the others are on the other side of the room, so let's just head back over there. Up here. So this is uh, one of Marie's, Marie Evans bags. And this one is called the Bionic Gear Bag by So Like a Rockstar. That is a company evidently called So Like a Rockstar. So I sew like someone addicted to sewing, but you can sew like a rock star. So that's this. Now I actually, I own one of these, uh, but I didn't make it. It was made for me by my bestest buddy in America, Marie, uh, sorry, Mary Beth at the Quilters Corner in Finlayville in just outside Pittsburgh in Pennsylvania. That's my description of her. So her shop is like my shop on steroids, it's 
incredible. It's my favourite shop in the whole world, really, because if I have 100 boutiques, she has 300. If I have 20 Japanese, she has 200. And it's a beautiful, beautiful store. And, in fact, she will be our go-to specialist store for my stuff in America. Um, so I've now got fabric going straight from me to her... Sorry, straight from Japan to her store. So she's got my things there. That's besides the point. I'm sorry, Marie, I got sidetracked. But at the last show, trade show we did in America, Marie, she gave me one of these bags um, for my for the money at the show. Um, and I used it for the money once, and now it's a precious thing. So I was so amazed when I saw your bag because she also told me it wasn't easy to make this bag, so you get full credit from me for doing it. So it's got a, see this, it's got a great big zip that goes round. And um, Marie, I'm assuming for demonstration purposes, has her Frixion pen and her all important pointy stick and her pen in here. So I'll pop them over here so they don't fall out. So it looks like an oil bag. Check this out, will you? Look at all of the zips. So um, Mary Beth's idea for me was that I could put American money and Australian money and whatever else and check some things in here because it's so confusing when you do a show uh, in America or in England and you're dealing with different currencies and all sorts of different bits and bobs are going on. So I had that. But Marie has managed to successfully execute a bag that's got four zip compartments inside and then a great big zip around the outside. So um, I'll, be, I'll be so interested to see what my three judges um, hone in on when they, and, and they relate to when they actually do the judging for the bag challenge this weekend. It'll be, it'll be interesting to see if I'm, you know, if, if, if Maria goes towards handwork or, or Eileen goes towards machine or Nathan goes towards executed bags because he's Benina or I actually don't think they will. I think they'll go the complete opposite and we're going to really see some, it'll be a personal decision for them. It won't be based on anything that they do and I've said that to Nathan you know you judge what you want it's really he's from Benina but it's all about what you like so I'm, I'm, I'll be really really interested to see their reaction to the bags when they get together this weekend and do the judging this one arrived yesterday when we were doing the show uh, which was really exciting and this one is from Val Musgrove so I do I love this this is my weekender bag, but Val has put her own stamp on it, uh, and it's it's just gorgeous. So on the back on these bags, you've got a big pocket across the back on the weekender, which is great. And then on the front, you've got. I'm trying to hold it up, Val. Actually, she had a cushion. That, let me pop the cushion back in. Let me just pop that in so that it keeps its shape. It's, uh, it's got two pockets on the inside as well. There we go. So under here, you've got a little zip pocket. So she's popped in beautifully, inserted a little zip pocket in here. And I love what she's done with the flap. So these bags do a little bit of an embellishment instruction, but it really is your opportunity to add your own signature to the bag. And Val's made some gorgeous little Suffolk Puff yo-yos to pop across her bag there on the front. And it's just gorgeous. Very, very nice. Very nice. Okay. So, again, thank you very much for waiting for us this afternoon. Um, and I was just speaking with uh, Steve. He's got everything for the show bags to get to put up. Um, and he's waiting for me to write the descriptions. So, I'm going to show you what's in the show bags. And then I'm going to run over to the laptop when we finish the show and type up the descriptions and then we're going to get him to pop it up. So probably within about an hour, the show bags will be up online. There are a limit on some of them. There aren't that many of one of them and I've given him the limits on the other. So um, yeah, I'm not trying to panic by you, but please don't be disappointed particularly if you miss out on the Melbourne one. 
How could anyone pick a winner? I know, Heather. That's why I pay them the big bucks, also known as a bottle of something, to do the judging. Um, you know what? I, I, how can anyone pick? What's really nice about judging is, and I've done it myself a couple of times when I've been asked to judge, you go, yeah, sure, I'll do it. But when you actually go into a judging zone, whether you've had formal training to do it or not, which I, I haven't, you really take it seriously. And even even when we had the shows with viewers' choice at the exhibitions down at the gardens, people took it very seriously, even if no one knew that they were the ones that had voted. And um, it's really, yeah, it's tough. It's going to be tough, um, very tough to choose a winner. Yeah, love the bag with the compartments, Christine. I know, I know. I'm, I'm, I'm too faint-hearted to have a go, though. <laughs> too faint-hearted to have a go. So, yeah, Sharon, you're most welcome. It's all good. All right, let me show you what's in these show bags, and then I'm going to let you get back to your sewing for the afternoon. Right, to go off camera and pull them out. So, I have done two... And you know what, I mean, you would have guessed what I'm putting in these, I'm absolutely sure. Uh, I don't, I don't have a table at the moment. I will have a table by um, tomorrow or Friday because I've got everyone's things up off the floor and I need to set up a demo table for you to show you what I'm going to do with the charm squares, but I couldn't sort of do it with showing quilts at the same time. I will get that organised because I really want to show you a couple of ideas. So the first thing... So there's two, there'll be two show bags. Um, both of them come up to about $80 worth in value and they are $52.50. So it's not, it's not little, it's substantial, but you're getting a lot of savings. A lot of the things in them you may already have, but it's going to be a great opportunity to grab them at a good price so that you can put them away for presents for Christmas. So the pink and teal one, we had to do one in pink and teal. Cass said, you've got to do one in pink and teal. That was the whole theme for the show. And if we'd you know, gone ahead with it here at the warehouse, it was all pink and teal and it's spring. So the first one is the Under the Australian Sun Scarf. So these are valued at 25. Now I clash with Eileen's quilt. <laughs> um, you're also getting uh, one of the little gum leaf lens cloths. So these are really good for one of the men in your life if you don't want to keep it for yourself as a Chrissy present. So they're about 10. Then we're doing the pink and teal trivet. So we've had these on special recently, but these are going in and these, normal price on these is 15, 14.95. Then, hand cut with love by me. <laughs> there is a charm square pack and these will be just for, just, just for the show. So in here, you have got two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. You have 20 10 inch squares in here. And that works out to a meter and a quarter. So that's about 32.50. So if you're doing your maths, we're well up, we're well up over. Um, and these are 10 inch squares and I have put these together. I'll just hold them up for you. Uh, they're all laid out in a pretty photo to go on the website. So you've got all of all of the greens and creams and teals and pinks that all go together. So please have a look at those. Obviously, you've got post on top, but um, if you're doing, depending on what else you're doing, you might be buying some cottons and things as well. So that'll all work out fine for you. So that's one of them. Uh, I know that one was value was up over 80 and that is... Uh, 52.50. I don't know what, I think I might have just dropped it even more. I think it was, I'll fix that with Steve. 52.50 it is now, Steve, if you're listening. Oh my goodness. All right, the other one is Australis Melba. Again, a really good chance to pick up some presents. So this, this is the one with the limit, um, which is our Pride and Joy, our mugs. So after the exhibition had to end early back in May, we had had these mugs made for it and everyone got their refunds and all of that done. We had mugs left. So what you have to appreciate is I have two sons. So both my boys now have their set of mugs 
in exchange for doing wild and wonderful things for their mum with the website and emails and all those sorts of things. So, so when, when we were all done and dusted, I think there's about 10 left. So we're not doing many of these packs. So that's our little Waratah mug. It's no point, in, no point in lying to you. If you've got mugs and you have a family business, of course everyone wants the mugs. Um, so the mugs. And then also what we had for this exhibition, which of course now we're just going into our giftware section because we couldn't have you in, was one of the little Melba trinket boxes. There you go. They've got Melba in gold. So they are really nice. They're a beautiful present as well to give someone, particularly for giving them a little bit of jewellery or a little pair of scissors. Um, so if you order one of these, don't panic if you can't see the trinket box as it just fell out. The trinket box will be inside the mug inside its box, okay? So that they're all nice and safe. And then you've also got this massive value. Oh, Steve's going to kill me because you know he's kind of running the website now, so... You're going to have one of the glasses case kits for the little Melbourne glasses purse case and that is all your fabric and your frame that come in it and the instructions are in there as well. They are 25 on their own. So big stuff, big stuff. Then also in it you have got 60 centimetres of project panel which is the same one that the girls have been using in their bags. And you've also got a fat quarter each of the new dark red Melba fans and some Hampton Stripe for a lining. So that's going to be a really good kickoff for you to make a bag. Uh, have a look through your patterns. When you order this, you can always order a bit more. Grab your batting because that's the great thing about our new website now. It's really easy and a lot less expensive to send you out batting because it's not based on volume anymore, it's based on weight with the account we've set up with Australia Post. So it's really good to grab that sort of thing now. So they are the two show bag kits. I'm looking at my phone, I'm waiting for him to go, what are you doing? You've changed the price again. You know what? It's all fun. It's all fun. Doesn't worry me. I just want you to have something from the show because you couldn't come in here and see them in person. So we'll get those up on the website straight away. They will be called the Australian Textile Exhibition Show Bag. So if you put show bag into the search window, uh, keep an eye on it and then you'll see them come up. Now, what I'll be doing tomorrow is showing you, um, yeah, in the morning we're going to do a, a a quilt for Flynn, basically. There's a beautiful nursery rhyme quilt from Aline that I'm going to show you. And then uh, I've got another one. I've got another pretty one of hers that we're going to do. We're also going to have a look at some of Felicity's quilts tomorrow. So um, Flick makes beautiful quilts in Tasmania and she's got a thing for my fabric. So there's a few of hers looking around the room. There's a few of hers here. Um, Felicity is a piecer, a prolific piecer. So that might put some of you back in your comfort zone and I've got more challenge bags to show you. Then in the afternoon, uh, we're going to do a series of quilts by Eileen that are beautiful and involve a lot of her iron work and they run through the four seasons. So I've got to get really organised and set up to run those tomorrow afternoon because we're going to do them as one show together. So that'll be good. Then more on Friday, um, there'll be Rachel Daisy Quilts on Friday. Friday as well, we will be um, having a look at, uh, did you know I've got in the building Michelle Hill's quilt? Did you know I've got her Australian quilt in the building still? And we'll be looking at that on Friday because we're launching that as a block of the month. So I want to show and tell it. It belongs here. I'm very excited it's here. But also we can start talking about the block of the month for that. And then more on Saturday, Sunday. So, yeah. Oh, demos. Demos for the show bags with the fabric in the pink and teal. We're going to do that on Friday, I think. So, I'll just see how I go. You know, it's all, it's all sort of, there's so much here to show you. And I will get as much of it out as we go as I can. So, enjoy the rest of your day. Apologies again, we were running a bit late. Um, any questions, please send them through to info at chandlerscottage.com. Because when I get off my phone, sorry, when I get off live now, my phone's being used to do all the photo shoots of these beautiful quilts to put up on Facebook for you. So any questions, pop them through into info at Chandler's Cottage 
and I will see you tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock. All right, bye.